Hi guys, it's me Chazzer HD and welcome to this incident analysis for the 2019 US Grand Prix that of course took place yesterday. And in this video, we're going to look at how Ferrari completely lost the race really in the first lap or so and then later on Sebastian Vettel's suspension failure. And also look at another incident from the first lap which was definitely costly for one Alex Albon. But first... Let's look at how Sebastian Vettel lost uh, his positions at the start of the Grand Prix. So his initial getaway from the grid was poor, as he is on the dirty side of the grid. Yes, he has the inside line, but still the dirty side of the grid is the inside of the pit straight. And Max Verstappen, as soon as the Grand Prix got underway, Verstappen was already coming around the outside. and. As you can see at about this point, Sebastian has simply let Max Verstappen take the outside slash racing line into the corner because Max is super committed. He has the line. He has the grip to make the corner. And Sebastian at that point was a beaten man and knew that Max Verstappen had him beat into that corner, as you can see about now. But then after Vettel lost that position and Lewis Hamilton made his way past a Sebastian's teammate Charles Leclerc. Then Lewis Hamilton set after Sebastian Vettel. Now you guys may say well this overtake is not that great because Sebastian had a suspension problem which we found out later on but got to remember that Sebastian and Lewis did not know that at the time so they were racing hard for position. So at this point, coming into what is uh, turn 8, I believe, Lewis is now trying, if he can, to set up a move later on in this lap. And as we get to this point, going into the next corner, the slowish right-hand corner, going into the uphill turn 9, Sebastian does have a good line into the corner. He has the inside line, which is the line you have to be on really going into the corner. But Lewis Hamilton is in such a racy mood to go and get positions to make his way up the field and to make up for his poor qualifying result and simply says, whatever you do, I'm going to go the other way round and make an overtake work. And simply, he goes right around the outside of Sebastian Vettel. And by the time we get to this point, Again, Sebastian has basically allowed Lewis the space to go into the next corner. And Sebastian is a beaten man at this point because Lewis has what is to be the inside line for the next corner. So, well, this time, Lewis really has Sebastian beaten into that next corner, as you can see right there. But now, we'll go back to that first lap. Because there was a crash of sorts between Alexander Albon and Carlos Sainz. Now, you can see there, Charles Leclerc, Alex Albon and Carlos Sainz uh, side by side going into the exit of turn one. Now, because they're three wide, one of the drivers is going to have to go off the track. Because on the exit of this corner, you simply can't do that without having one driver go off the track. It's a very tight exit is the exit of turn one but then because Albon I think slightly loses the rear end I don't know if it was because of slight contact I don't think it was he slightly loses the rear end and goes a bit wider than he's hoping for into the exit of the corner he may also have had slight contact with Carlos Sainz's left front tyre to Alex Albon's uh, right rear tyre so that may also be a cause as to why Albon went a bit wider than he would have wanted to. And then Albon and Sainz went off the track and Albon then flew over the top of the orange sausage curb on the exit of turn one. Now, if I come back to the previous pitch, you can see right there before Albon goes over, um, you can see right there the orange little jump there. And then as we play it on, he goes up into the air. Now, I have to have a bit of a rant here because 
We saw in, I believe, Formula 3 at the Italian Grand Prix with Alex Peroni how these orange uh, sausage curbs on the exits of corners do not solve anything. They do not. They're not a deterrent for drivers going all four wheels off the track or going off the track, period. And it really can make a crash or a bit of contact between drivers or a crash with a driver on its own a lot worse than it has to be. If that wasn't there, then Albin would not have flown in the air and had to maybe pit. I'm not sure exactly where Albin's uh, damage came from. I think it might have came from going over that curb. But they have to, the FIA, get rid of those orange sausage curbs because they do not solve anything they do not solve anything and i actually think they're quite dangerous and i don't see enough good enough reasons to keep that at you know race tracks we race at in formula one so they must get rid of that but finally let's go on to the suspension failure of sebastian vettel now this suspension failure as we learned after the race, he actually had a problem with the suspension as the laps were going on, the first eight laps before he retired from the race. So that's why he did drop back through the field. But this is what knocked him out of the Grand Prix eventually, and it really did finish off his rear right suspension. So you can see here on the exit of turn nine, he's running over that rumble strip that was put there to try and deter the drivers from going that wide. And then as he hits it, about here, you can see the right rear suspension is now all over the place and the car is now up in the air. And then Vettel has quite a scary moment through turn 10, trying to drive into the corner with no right rear suspension with the left front in the air as well. Now, we don't know whether this was a Ferrari problem or it was the track giving Ferrari this problem. If it was those rumble strips or orange uh, sausage curbs that was doing that for Ferrari suspension, then again, those have to be removed because you cannot have things out there on the track that are breaking cars because that is a safety issue and that is too dangerous. I'm fine with deterrence for going off track, but they cannot damage the car. They cannot do that. And also, with the bumps we've had this weekend, if that's also been a factor into this happening, then again, they've got to improve that situation. Because again, it's a safety issue and bumps on a racetrack, if that is one of the causes, should not be breaking racing cars. It shouldn't. There's nothing wrong with a bumpy racing track, but it shouldn't be breaking the cars. Simple as. But I'm sure we'll find out very soon what the actual cause of the suspension failure was. But guys, that's been it for this video. Let me know in the comments section down below. What did you think of Hamilton's pass on Sebastian Vettel on the first lap? What did you think of Albon and the contact, I guess, slightly of Carlos Sainz and the orange uh, sausage curve on the exit of turn one? And what did you think of... Vettel's suspension failure and what do you think could have caused it was it the rumble strips was it the aggressive curbs was it the bumps let me know what you think it probably could have been and for the track do you think there's any improvements that have to be made to stop this happening if it is indeed the track that did this for Ferrari let me know in the comments section down below also don't forget guys I will be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. UK time for another episode of the podcast where me and Nib are going to review the US Grand Prix and we'll get Nib's perspective of what he thought happened in the Grand Prix. So don't forget to come along to that tomorrow at 12 p.m. UK time. But guys, until that video coming up tomorrow, it has been me, Tazer HD. Goodbye.